Hey, good day everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video, I'm hoping it's gonna be reasonably short, but I think you and I both know it's not gonna be. When I spotted this on Alibaba, I think I might have paid about 20 bucks, 30 bucks or something for it. I'll put the link and everything down in the description and, and the price up here somewhere on the screen so you can actually see it. Cause it's been, I've had this for so long that I can't actually remember. What this is gonna do is, it's gonna go into the back of the door here, in behind this little drop down flap here, which is how you access the bolts to remove your rear wheel carrier. What's gonna allow us to do is reach in and just push this lever and open the rear door from inside. Now, for me, this doesn't really hold a lot of value and ultimately I bought this for you guys who asked me all about this in the past. Obviously for me, if I put this table up here like this, the chances of me reaching in the back here to get to that are buckles and none. So if you're the same as me and you've got a rear table on the back of your Pajero like this, you shit out of luck unless you leave yourself a corner here somewhere that you can reach in and get to this. What we need to do to get into this is we're gonna to need to take this rear panel off, which means I'm gonna to need to take all this stuff off from the table build. So this table and everything's gonna to have to come off because we need to take this rear panel off. The good news is that that's just a case of just pulling it off. I think there might've been a couple of screws in the middle here somewhere, I can't remember. I do have a more detailed video up there if you want to go and have a look at getting this rear panel off. We won't go into depth here. Uh, we will just focus on the fitment. Now, I'm not entirely sure what is involved in actually getting this attached to the car. I think it's a case of, well, one, two, three bolts. This is an additional one that comes with it. Um, I believe these two already mount up to bolts that are already inside the car. Again, it's a pretty simple sort of thing. The reason I say I don't exactly know how it fits is that all I've got to work with is a picture from Alibaba. There's no instructions that come with this, so hopefully this will help anybody uh, that's looking to do the same. Yeah. Do you want a couple of quick updates while we're here? Let's do this. I <laughs> think that while I've been doing no videos, I haven't been doing anything in the background. The table still looks the same, no changes there. As you know, we've got the lithium set up under the rear section here where the third row seat is. We've got the Renogy 3000 watt inverter over the back. What I've actually gone and done is just mounted the Renogy switch there, the remote switch. It actually comes with a Renogy for about 300, 350 bucks, I think there was. Got to tell you, really happy with the Renogy. I mean, it's doing everything it needs to do. And we just mounted one of these just eBay uh, battery monitors up there as well. So I just ran this little power board uh, just down the bottom here. That switches into the Renogy. So when I switch it on here, this little power board has power, so it's got USB and obviously a couple of sockets. So when I want to use the induction cooker, I just plug it in there and we're good to go. And any other tools that I want to use. And just in case you're curious. I honestly didn't expect the drawer to be that much. Gives me 240 volt right at the back of the car. Super buddy handy. It's just off the switch for the energy there. So yeah, really happy with that. Love to be cutting ends off these and routing them up through the back and, and all that sort of stuff. Realistically, when it comes to 240 volt, I'm not qualified and I'm not gonna mess about with it. I'm just happy with just, you know, plugging things in and stuff like that and then just keeping my life simple. All right. So what we've got here is we need to get into this section here. This is ultimately where that panel uh, that you're gonna drop down to get to the switch is gonna sit. Yeah, interesting. We've got this plastic cover here, which is going to have to come out uh, for this. So we're not going to have this anymore. We're going to have to drop the plastic, obviously, to get in the back. That's going to have to stay out of the way as well, so we may need to cut that. There's a fight and a little bit to come out. So I need to put a little bit of grease on them while we've got them out as well. Just come around this side. Just grab the back of the wheel carrier. Just lift it up a little bit and then I'll take the weight off the bolt which makes it easier to get out. 
There you go, done. Put these somewhere safe here. So now that we've taken the bolts out, we should. Okay, so that is attached to the plastic. Okay, so it looks like we might be just cutting this off here, which may in theory let dust into the car a little bit. A little bit of a rip this, in that this section, this metal section is still in the picture, but they've just got this folded down and bent out of the way. I'll put it up on the screen there. So we are gonna have to remove this because this is not gonna allow us, the way they've got it just bent down, covers up these bolts for the rear cover for the tire. So if we did that, put the door back on, you wouldn't be able to access those bolts. So this, we're gonna have to just cut this, which is not great, uh, but it is what it is. No, I do this for you because I don't need this bloody latch. Okay, so when you pull the mechanism, there's a lever pushes this way. So when you go in, it's gonna be in this orientation. So as you can see, when you push on it, it's gonna push that lever that way. The problem is, this is not the two minute job I thought it was gonna be. This needs to come out to start. We need to take this bracket out just to give ourselves access to see what we're working with. I also went and had new springs put in the Pajero. So what I've actually gone and done is changed over to King Springs. I've still got the Bilstein shocks as per the kit that I originally got from Bushkins. Um, but when I got those way back when, before I had a whole bunch of stuff on the Pajero, like all the plates and all that sort of stuff, I recommend that you go and do all that stuff, then get your springs done. But the heavy duty was the heaviest they had at the time in the Lovell and Bilsteins there at uh, Bushkin, so that was what I went with, knowing that I was going to put a whole bunch of stuff on the Pajero. Not quite how much, not knowing quite how much stuff I was going to put on. And then over time, it's just the springs just haven't kept up. Um, and it wasn't until a friend drove it and he went, Jesus, this is like a boat, mate, it's floating all over the place. And then every time I drove it, just on the road and hit bumps and stuff, like I could feel it just moving around. So King Springs have some extra heavy duty and some heavy, heavy duty. I'll put the specs up on the screen. Uh, so it's come back up. I hadn't realized how much the Pajero had actually dropped. So now she's come back up to a former glory. You can see the springs from the side and it's looking like a race four-wheel drive again and feeling and driving like a race four-wheel drive. So much, much better. One, two, three, four, five. So the five bolts, we're gonna just take these out. So we've undone the five bolts. One would think that would just pull out now, but it doesn't. Swing around the other side, more holes, more bolts. Come around to the other side and we've got some bolts here. So look, we're just gonna undo everything we can see. Just take the whole lot out. Okay. So that's that section has come out. That's where those two bolts just took out, come from. And the good news, we had to take all those bolts out, all four, the other side. So this is, is the holes there with that plastic piece that we just unbolted. That's where those come in. And here's the two, uh, I guess, where we had to take those nuts off. So you, you do literally take the five off the front and then the four off the back. Now, I don't necessarily think we need to do this for the install, but because I'm guinea pigging this, um, I want to have a look at the lever in the back because I think I might be able to unbolt the lever to give myself better access. So um, ultimately what we should be able to do is just pull on this, same as the other side, and it's just um, pop studs. And then while we've got this off, we'll give it a clean. Yeah, okay, so it's going to give us access to the actual lever. So if you come to the back of the door, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and this is a locator here. These are our bolt holes. You can see there's a bit of filth and you can see they have actually had some sort of double-sided tape or something that's been holding that on. Maybe that's just like a, a rubber to stop noise or something. I'm not entirely sure but you can see all the dirt and shit that's on back here. Now that we've got this out we'll give it a clean but um, there we go. Ultimately what I wanted to do was I just wanted to get a better look at this. And you can see this is your lever. It's not really giving us 
anything extra to work with. I thought we were going to get a bolt or something that we could pull this out. Is it a lever from the inside? So that bolt that we pointed out earlier, so that's the one we need to take off and that's going to attach to, that's going to attach to this part of the bracket. And the other part that's doing the levering, um, the, the top part that moves with the hole in it, looks like it might just attach to the back um, of that bar that goes through. This looks, the hole looks like it's going to sit on the back of that arm, the bar that comes out and does the levering. And this is just going to sit in front of that and just to hold it in place so it doesn't slip off. If you look at it, because we've got an issue. Hopefully you can see how that's attached to this section here. This is the little bar that we're faffing about with. We had it off and when you put it on it pinches this piece of metal here. That's where the actuator bar goes through. And then you just, where that goes through this piece here, where that goes through this piece here, that hold section that I was talking about just presses onto the, just presses onto the back of this bar. So literally this is just holding that hole on the back of this actuator bar here. So it just sandwiches this section here. So when you move it, you can see that whole thing just shifts. If we use the outside lever, so you can see that just moves like that. Now the problem we've got, you can see this is now, this is sticking in the open position. It's not going back. So if I use the outside handle, unlocks, then it's not going to shut. I don't think this is all perfectly aligned with the mechanism that's in the car. And you can see this section here, it's just literally going through a hole here. So there's no bearing there, there's no... It's all a bit raggedy here and here. I think when that's got a bit, a bit of angle on it, all that's doing is just digging in here. Because there's no adjustment in the back here, because that's all spot welded. And we've loosened this right up. Yeah, so the only tension on the rest of this is in here. So what we might do is throw some grease on it. So here I was thinking, haven't made a video for a while. Why don't we jump in with something simple? Okay, we might have won. I was honestly thinking I was just about to pull this back out and say, yeah, nah. Buy it at your own leisure, but it won't be staying in my car. Yeah. Okay. I've got one more thing to try. As soon as I've tightened up that nut to hold the handle on, it locks up. So, Something's out of alignment. Okay, so what I've done is just lifted the bar off, put the washer on, put the bar back over, put the nut on, see what happens. Tighten it up and find out for sure, eh? So all I have done is taking a washer, put it under here, then put the bar on, then put that nut back on, that you can see there, and it now appears to work without issue. We'll grab that back lever, and I think we've got it. Of course, we need to test it again. Of course, we need to make sure it works from the outside still. Still latching. I think we can finally call that a win. So that still goes in there. Mechanism still works. Now that I know what I'm doing, 
it's a pretty easy job. The, the back section needs to come off, just pop studs as long as you don't have a table or whatever. Just pull all those studs off, peel the plastic back. Five bolts holding this section on, four from the other side. This screw here that comes with the unit itself, under the one nut that's holding on the rear door handle. Just, you know, take that little plate off, pop that mechanism onto the back of the bar that's going through on that hole, sandwich that back up, you know, put your screw in, put the nut back on. With the washer, in my case, your mileage may vary. Put everything back together. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. Again, it's just, you know, because I hadn't done it before uh, and we had that issue with the alignment, I guess. Beyond that, I think we call it good. As you can see, if we were to put this back on, you're not gonna be able to get to that lever. But we could probably just cut this corner out and get away with that. So let's see what let's see how much of this we can actually maintain. So that way we've only cut out this corner here. Woohoo! And you can see that still works. We've lost some dust proofing there. We've got that small section where dust can get in, but it's better than cutting that whole section here. I was literally just gonna cut it from here to here and have that whole section open, uh, but I'm happy with that. Let me put this back together, put it back on. We'll show you how you actually access it and then we'll tie this thing together, right? Eh? So what you would do to access this is pop off this and then you can reach in to that lever just there and open it from the inside. But having to take that off to get to the lever is a bit of a pain in the backside. No, but, but look, it, it is what it is. At least it works. But that's it. That's the interior rear door latch opener handle thing. And for me, this table. is gonna be up like that. So when I'm inside the back of the Pajero and camping, my camp box, basically my camp bed build, comes all the way up to this and holds this up. So there's no way for me to fold that table down to reach into the back of that to open that rear door. So again, this was purely done because I've had so many questions about it. It wasn't certainly something I needed. If it was a bit more convenient, like um, a push button or something on the top of the door that I can access from inside the Pajero whilst I've got it all decked out. That'd be great. It just simply isn't that. Before I paid less than 30 bucks, I think I can't even remember. It was definitely less than 30 bucks because I was on Alibaba and I was looking at all their Pajero stuff. And they've got some really nice stuff here. They've got those um, metal uh, rear window covers that works like a molly uh, so you can hang stuff off there. I was looking at those but they're sort of 150 bucks, 200 bucks, and I thought, you know what? I'll throw Alibaba a bone, I'll buy something cheap, and I'll have a look at it, and we'll see what the quality is like, and if it, everything's good, then I might look at investing in some other stuff. At the end of the day, I get chipped up by YouTube, um, yeah, somewhere between three and $500, depending on how many videos I put out per month, so that's why I'd get it roughly a month. Because I haven't been doing any videos lately, it's it dropped down under 300 bucks, so. Um, I've got a few products on the go. Uh, I do need to set me a new head unit, but it's gonna go into the other car. I don't think it's going into this one. 13.3 inch Android head unit. There's a Facebook group, Pajero Performance, Steve's group. Um, I'll put a link down in the description and I apologize, Steve. I, I don't think I've actually recommended you uh, on the channel before. Now, Steve's doing four inch lift kits for the Pajeros and he's going through all the trials and tribulations, getting all that sorted out and getting all that testing done. Um, I did tell him that once he's got it all sorted out, we would catch up and go over the whole product from the top to the bottom. Steve has organised a catch up on this date uh, up in the Wadigans in New South Wales. So if you're in the area, um, you know, look to come along, bring your Pajero along, catch up with everybody. I'm still not 100% sure I'm going to make it because I'm finishing on a night shift and whatever. Anyway, I'm going to look to try and get there. Not sure if I'm going to make it yet at this stage, but details will be down in the description. Um, go and jump on the Facebook group and if you're in the local area come along uh, and go and have a look at Steve's 4 inch lift kits I think you'll be very impressed with those uh, I am tossing up whether I want to do that with the Bajero because if I did that then I'd have to get bigger tyres too anyway uh, what I'd really like 
if anybody knows somebody who does wraps reasonably cheap or would be interested in sort of doing a promo thing I'd like to get this done in camo in a camo wrap and just see what that looks like uh, but anyway that's uh that's for another video hopefully that was helpful hopefully that'll be of use to you and if you got to go and do one you won't fight all the faff that I had thanks very much for stopping by it's nice to see you again summer's finally here it's gonna start raining again later in the week but whatever you have a good time and we'll catch you on the next one eh?